Good morning, I'm Jorge Suarez, and today I'll discuss some compelling reasons why Africa's future may be brighter than its past. It's an unfortunate reality that when many of us think of Africa, the first images that come to mind are those of war, suffering, starvation, and extreme poverty. A quick glance at the headlines only reinforces these negative images. Armed conflict persists in Uganda, Ivory Coast, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and of course Sudan. On the economic front, stories of corruption, debt, and mismanagement in places like Nigeria and Zimbabwe are front page news the world over, leading many to give up hope for these stricken countries. Yet it was not long ago that Europe was in a similar state. After two world wars, a monumental effort was required to rebuild the continent and prevent it from sliding back to war. A cornerstone of this process was the idea that development and economic growth were fundamental to maintaining peace into the future. So why has this idea seemingly failed to help Africa? Most directly, the Cold War and related state collapses since the 1990s have made it virtually impossible to try to apply the same model in Africa as was used in post-war Europe. From an investor's perspective, African markets have traditionally been areas of high risk, low return, and little prospect. This negative view is now beginning to change. Recent moves by investors suggest that brighter days are ahead for Africa's economies. For instance, the BBC reports that Starbucks plans to double its purchases of African coffee by 2009. The deal would inject an additional 800 million US dollars into the African coffee industry over the next two years. Deals such as these, accompanied with new microfinance initiatives, are providing African farmers with unprecedented opportunities for entrepreneurship. At the same time, Canada's Globe and Mail reports that Kuwait's largest mobile phone company, MTC, plans to spend some 10.5 billion US dollars expanding its operations in Africa, where Middle Eastern and European firms compete for control of the booming telecoms industry. Still, these initiatives pale in comparison to the level of Chinese investment in African markets. A November 2006 trade forum in Beijing saw representatives of 48 out of 53 African countries meet with Chinese President Hu Jintao and other high-ranking officials. According to the New York Times, the weekend-long meeting resulted in a series of bilateral trade deals worth $1.9 billion and involving 11 African states. Chinese Prime Minister Wen Jiabao predicted that bilateral trade with African nations would surpass $100 billion by 2010, double the volume of trade observed in 2006. As a result, African countries may enjoy the greatest boom in foreign investment they have ever experienced. Questions remain as to the desirability of this model of development. Many African experts worry that China's aggressive investment strategy is simply a ploy to secure cheap raw materials and that the poorest Africans will fail to benefit at all. Such critics point to China's continuing purchases of Sudanese oil, despite events in Darfur, as evidence of the narrow self-interest guiding this trade expansion. But the evidence suggests that China's entry into the African market is having profound repercussions even in developed countries. As part of the November trade deals, China plans to allow 440 African-made products tariff-free access in Chinese markets, many of these being manufactured goods. Perhaps in response to this trade liberalization, the European Union announced this month that it is slashing its import duties and subsidies on sugar, a commodity grown throughout Africa. The Wall Street Journal further reports that similar trade barriers on fruit and vegetable products may soon be lowered, a move which would spur investment in some of the world's poorest rural economies. Gains are being made in the financial sector as well. At the G8's next summit, set for June, Germany is expected to submit a proposal to create a World Bank-managed microcredit fund for African entrepreneurs. Heidemarie Visorek Zoil, the German development minister, called the fund a positive signal to Africa's poorest who often miss out on the effects of investment. So while Africa may still elicit images of despair, it would be unfair and unwise to ignore undeniable changes to the current situation. The world is finally listening to Africa, and these latest steps on the investment frontier may finally provide some solutions to one of the world's most war-torn and poverty-stricken regions. Cautiously, at least, it appears that brighter days are indeed ahead for Africa's economies. For The Global Current, I'm Jorge Suarez.